Next one, estate taxes, same person. This is the last of your questions, at least so far, unless you want to type something else below. Estate taxes for Australian kids of US citizens related to US assets, federal or, probable, or possibly state. Well, you, you're very succinct in that question, so I'll need to try and interpret what it is you're asking about. I'll start off by saying that from a US tax perspective, estate taxes are not levied on the, the beneficiaries or those inheriting the assets. It'll be on the estate itself, right? So assuming the estate will be yours because you are in Australia with some US CITES assets. Uh, it may, so the, the US CITES assets would typically be subject to US estate taxes. So when on, on the unfortunate uh, moment of your, your passing, then whoever your the responsible party would be, the administrator or whatever, your attorney, would be filling out the returns and filling out the requisite paperwork on, on behalf of your estate. And if any taxes are due, it would need to be settled by the estate, typically before the assets are passed on to the kids. Now, uh, a determination would need to be made by a professional so qualified to see whether you are US domiciled for transfer tax purposes or Australia domiciled, or you're not US domiciled, so either US or not. So the tax code is silent on that, so typically we look at case law and what case law says is that the, the fact patterns that the judge will pay attention to would be intent plus deliberate action. So when you left the US to move to Australia, was it your, I mean, an extreme example would be, did you have a going away party? Did you stream it on Facebook live? And you said, US, goodbye, I'm out. I'm never coming back. I'm done. You know, and you slick, you sold most of your stuff. Obviously, you kept some assets, which you're talking about now. But for the most part, you severed ties uh, with the U.S. and you made Australia the center of your life. And in a situation like that, yeah, you may be deemed to not be U.S. domiciled because you've severed ties. You've gone. The alternative, or the opposite, would be. Well, you know, when I left the U.S., I kept, you know, like I kept membership with my, some of my social clubs. You know, I fly back every year for certain key events with my friends. And, you know, I can't, I probably still have the family home. It may not even be rented out because I, I just want a place that I can stay when I come back to the U.S. And, you know, again, looking at the fact patterns, maybe a judge would say, hmm, you know what, you really did not intend to permanently leave the U.S. I mean, the U.S. is still the center of your life, right? Then you'd be deemed U.S. domiciled for, for the purposes of transfer taxes. Why is this important? This ties back to the, the question that you've asked on the estate taxes. If it is you're not domiciled in the U.S., then the, the threshold for those estate taxes are, are lower. It's actually something like $60,000 or something like that. So it's, it's pretty low. Above that, estate taxes at the federal level. I'm going to forget the state because you didn't mention what state you're in. So at the federal level, estate taxes will be due above that uh, very low threshold. If it is that you're not domiciled in the U.S. I mean, you, you know, uh, if it is, you've, you, you know, you've severed all ties in your Australia. You have, you're in Australia, you have not looked back. So therefore the potential estate tax liability on those US CITES assets would be higher than if you were deemed to be US tax domiciled. And then you will right now, the threshold is around $11 million. So assuming that your assets are less than a million, 11 million, then that lifetime exclusion would come to be cover everything. And at the federal level, there should be no estate taxes due. So tax planning time. 
you need to sit with your professional and go through your your situation, your unique situation. Are you still tax domicile in the U.S. for the purpose of transfer taxes, or are you not? And and you know, I, you need to factor in what are your Australian income, what are your Australian assets as well. You know, if everything is above eleven million, then uh, you may be subject to state taxes. Uh, on your Australian assets as well. So you need to sit with someone, go through your situation, see what position given your assets, your portfolio, which position works in your favor. And perhaps you can make some adjustments to your lifestyle to either be domiciled in the US for transfer tax purposes or not, depending on what works for you. So it's tax planning time. It is estate planning time. So... Hope that helps. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment below. Our books and upcoming events are available at htj.tax. Email us at help at htj.tax to engage us to advise on international tax or business matters.